Jew, her husband is getting ready to go up to do this yearly sacrifice unto the Lord, and he says, but Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and thereby forever. So she, 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 she I'm not saying she didn't worship God, please. Okay. I'm saying she stayed home, she took care of her child, she raised him up to a weaning age, which I don't know, that may be three years old, I don't know. And when he was ready to be separated from her, she went up to the house of the Lord, and she left her child there. Uh, verse 23, 24. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, and with three boys, and one people of flour, and a bottle of wine, and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Okay? And she left him there. She left Samuel with Eli. Now, that was at the end of her care for him. If you read chapter 2, she had a great prayer of praise, which we, we aren't going to read through. I encourage you to read this prayer. This is a prayer of somebody whose heart God has rejoiced, who knows God is in control of everything. And she went up, in chapter 2, verse 19, Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. I don't know, does that mean she only saw him once a year? I'm not sure how you interpret that. I can say this, she spent a lot of time making those coats. It wasn't, we ran out to the store and buy a coat. No, this was a coat like what Jesus had. One woman piece, remember that? They were valuable coats. They were so valuable that they, when Jesus died, they lotteried it off. They, they wouldn't cut it in pieces. They lotteried it off so one person could get the whole coat. These were valuable coats. They, 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 she spent effort making that coat. You wonder, did she, did she pray over every stitch or however they made it? Did she think about him? What was going on as she made this thing? And she went up year by year and she made this little coat for him. So she didn't stop caring for him just, just because she had transferred him from her house to um, the temple. And we know she conceived other uh, children, verse 21, and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare sons and three sons and two daughters. And they come in here, and the child Samuel grew before the Lord. It strikes me that she found the courage to give up Samuel to Eli. We know, we know that Eli did not know how to raise sons. The Bible tells us that his sons, when they were administering the sacrifices, you could bring in a sacrifice, and his sons would extort, right? I'm going to take this portion of your sacrifice, and if you don't give it to me, I'm kidding. That's what his sons were doing. So Eli had had a problem raising his sons to properly respect the Lord. You wonder, you know, when, a, when you're a parent, when your kids are with what their influence of those kids, those friends are. But apparently, Hannah, if she had reservations about Eli, it's not expressed. It's not expressed. And somehow, I can't imagine giving up my children like this. She did it. She did it. And she never stopped providing for Eli. Uh, but I give a flip over to Ephesians 6.4. Here's the first. I was, I was uh, in a Bible study at one point in time. I don't remember uh, if it was, it was where, where exactly it was. Uh, on the radio, on TV, uh, here in church. I can't remember where it was. And this verse came up. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And here's the question. Here's the question that the person leading the Bible study asked. Here's the question. Why is it necessary to remind fathers to bring up children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord? Why is it necessary? Why isn't, why isn't this verse also for women? The answer, frankly, is because women know how to nurture people and they know how to admonish people without having to be told. But men, we command, no, you're going to do it, my way. This, we instruct. But women nurture, they feed. They know how to admonish. You know, I, I can tell my kids what you did is wrong, and they're both the same one here, and not the other, doesn't matter how I'm at it. But my wife, she talks to them, usually, some kind of a response, because she knows how to take them <laughs> verbally, where it matters. And I, and I, and I don't, I'm in, I'm in. And they choose their own way. Luke chapter 2, verse 35. Mary has taken the baby Jesus into the temple. And this man, Simeon, who has been waiting for the birth of the Messiah, prophesies this, that a sword would pierce Mary's soul also. Um, it, 
it's almost like women have a physical attachment to their children. Um, I was watching a show on TV about a convict who had been put to death, and they showed the reaction of his mother, and it was like she felt that death. Women have this, I don't know how you explain it, I'm, but they feel somehow physically connected to their children, somehow, even no matter how old the kid gets. Um, Ruth will use words like, I carried you for nine months, I gave birth to you, and now you do this to me. I can't do that, can I? <laughs> My wife can. I brought you to the room. I can take you off. That means something when my, to my wife. When my wife says it. I can't. I can't say that. There is some kind of a special bond. Mothers have a special claim on their children that we fathers do not have. Consequently, I'm not quite sure how Hannah was able to take her child that she had just seen and lead him off at the temple of the Lord and let, let, let him be raised by Levi. Except that she had an incredible amount of faith in God. She knew Samuel came from God. She wrote in, uh, she said in chapter 2 and verse 9 that the Lord will keep the feet of his saints. She knew God would take care of Samuel. My wife and I get this discussion all the time. I get to worry about the kids. My wife says, they're not your kids. They're his. They're God's kids. And she's right. They're God's kids. They're God's kids. How she has that insight and I don't, I don't understand. But it's the truth. She found the strength, I believe, because she was a faithful woman of God, doing what she knew her son needed to have. Many men, we think about mothers, many men, many people, not men only, are influenced by their mothers, um, especially as regards to the gospel. Um, my own particular case, I remember my mother reading the Bible every day. My mother was a nurse. I remember asking her, did she believe in eternal life? Yes. Why did she believe in eternal life? Because in the hospital, she saw people die. Sometimes they died happy, and she knew there was something on the other side. Sometimes they didn't die so happy, and she knew there was something on the other side. And that struck with me. That's, my, dad could, my dad would tell you he doesn't see a reason why he has to have a relationship with God, but my mother was different. It made me think about my own walk with God. I think I am not the only male Christian who has that testimony. I think many of us have mothers who have prayed for us, who have nurtured us, who have admonished us, and, are, and have provided for us that we might know the gospel. Hannah, Hannah, she got motherhood after praying. She got motherhood after praying. And her prayer is a model prayer. A model prayer. She got her child. She nurtured her child. She made provision for her child. She released him to the Lord. She released him to the Lord. Hannah never stopped the fight for Samuel. I've told you this story before. I tell you it again. My mother, ever since I went away to college, which was, I'm 53 now, I was 18 when I went away to college. Every Thanksgiving they send me a card and I have $20 in there for the express purpose that I might be able to have turkey for Thanksgiving. I graduated from college, I moved out on my own, I got my own job. I'm still getting this card with that $20. <laughs> I got married, I have wife and kids. years ago, I hope I wasn't ungrateful about it, I said, Mom, you don't need to do this. This will do. I want to make sure you have turkey. Oh. <laughs> yeah, provide. 53 years old, still making sure that I'm right. Pastor Rawls will tell you, sometimes he preaches twice in a day, and the good thing about it is, he corrects his mistakes from the first sermon. This morning I meant to say something, and I failed to say it. I want to say it now. First Timothy. Chapter 5, 